wiki speed, 100 miles per gallon of awesome. So this is our convertible vehicle that we're producing that gets 100 miles per gallon. And I want to talk a little bit today about the chassis. So our chassis design, you see here, um, it uses a four inch aluminum extrusions and you can see these are all welded together. And we just want to take a look at some of the current issues and maybe some solutions on how we can actually uh, resolve the issues that we, we have. Some of the current design issues are that we lack doors or just an easy way to get into the vehicle. And you know, we've talked about a couple different things is actually cutting out the top rail, putting in doors that open, uh, gull wing doors, putting stairs that go down and actually step into it from above. Um, so a number of different ideas there. Um, it lacks a roof structure, which is something we're addressing now with a roll cage and, and a rooftop. But it's not something I'm going to talk about in today's uh, video. And then also just that welding decreases the strength of aluminum. So whenever you weld aluminum, this is 6061 T6 aluminum, and the T6 is the hardening of that aluminum alloy. Whenever you weld it, um, you actually take away that tempering, that hardening, in the area immediately around the weld. So the weld itself remains strong, but the area just around it is weakened. And we saw that in our, our actual crash testing that we did, that uh, a number of the, the welds that actually failed, they failed right in that area. So but that's one area of concern that we really want to address. And also just the lack of triangulation. The chassis doesn't have any triangulation to it. So we have, it's a really start, a stout, stiff uh, chassis, really strong, but it still doesn't have triangulation. And just from the engineering design principle, whenever you put triangles in a structure, it's going to increase the strength. So you know, today what we want to do is actually take a look at some of this stuff. So here's some of the ways that we can do it. We could actually the doors, we can either do side doors or this idea of stairs. I'm going to actually present on side doors today. Uh, the welding around the areas of the frame where it's currently welded. Well, uh, looking at using either riveting or adhesives or both, a combination of both to actually get around the welding issue. So I'm going to talk about some of those ideas. And then just the lack of triangulation, looking at corner braces and how those can be used to take the current chassis and actually increase the strength of it. So what I'm going to propose is the use of modular connectors. I'm going to go into more about what that means, but essentially modular connectors are a way that we can actually rivet the car together so we can have these connectors put in the pieces and rivet together so that all you need to actually build a vehicle is a rivet gun and a saw to cut up uh, the aluminum extrusions. So it takes away the need to actually have a welder at the, the, the construction site. We'll, we'll need some welding still, but when we're actually just putting the car together, um, you won't need to have that. It's going to be stronger than our current chassis and modules, so you'll see that with this design we can actually achieve greater strengths. It maintains the modularity of our current uh, car, so the same principles that have been used to build it, we maintain those into the future. Uh, adhesives will only increase the strength further, so if we use rivets we uh, apply adhesives also, it just increases the strength that we have. It creates a way to create a kit, so this actual uh, assembly of parts that we can actually ship worldwide. We can even leave out the aluminum extrusions and those can be sourced locally and just have a really small kit that we can actually send out to folks and they can assemble it wherever they happen to be in the world. And then it just creates a way to reliably construct and repeatedly build this car. So uh, with welding there's a lot of variability that can happen with that but if we actually have these module connectors already pre-built to our specs and actually just snapping them together in kind of the IKEA simplicity sort of way, we actually achieve a car that can be repeatedly built over and over again uh, with a lower skill level, but also with a, just a much more repeatable and known end result. So let's go to the demo and just actually look and see how this all works. So this is our current chassis, but it's been modified. So our current chassis is just welded at all of these joints, but instead of actually being welded, what we've done here is we actually put some plates on them. And these are um, 1 8 aluminum, 1 8 inch thick 6061 T6 aluminum plates that then been drilled and riveted into the scar. So let's actually uh, go forward with this. We can actually just look a little bit closer. You can see that at the corners, there's actually corner braces that are triangulating. So at each corner, there's three different plates that are actually uh, holding those corners. It just really increases the strength. And then the end plates, of course, add more strength to it. So this is the initial design I kind of came with. We exploded out. We'll take a look and see what all these plates exploded look like. And 
you can see there's just a lot of parts and pieces here. If we zoom in even a little bit more, take a look at this. So on these corner braces, there's actually three different units for each one of these. This is a lot of different pieces and a lot of holes. So that it requires just just probably more than it's necessary. <clears throat> After you know building up this design and working on it, I realized that it's probably too many holes. I'm actually weakening the strength of the aluminum by perforating it so many times. So actually trying to get around using this many holes and this many parts and pieces became my next goal. And just a way to increase the strength. So you can again see just all the different parts and pieces and it would be somewhat complex to get all these in the right place. You kind of have to have a, a diagram and say, okay, this is plate 1A, goes to G6, that sort of thing. So, and, and then I guess this, the other thing is we can actually take this same principle and we can apply it to a chassis with doors. So it just kind of took this concept a little bit further and you can see that if you zoom in, we actually can apply, you know, this is one idea of a, of a door concept. There's, there can be others out there, but a way that we can actually take the current chassis and apply doors to it and still use this riveted modular uh, connector construction type. It's just another way of looking at this. So also looking at the modules themselves, so this is the interior module. We can take it uh, with the same plate rivet concept and zoom in on it and you can see that we can triangulate it on the corners, uh, build a really strong uh, stout corners that don't require any sort of welding and it remains modular. Again, there's a lots of parts and pieces to this. And if you look at the engine module, it's sort of a similar thing. We can look and see the detail here of how they're just all uh, riveted together. Probably too many rivets in this design um, it needs to be iterated through and make it a little bit simpler uh, design as well. So here is the new concept or the new idea is actually taking um, all those different plates and parts and pieces and aggregating them into a single stru uh, structural unit. So one of these uh, modular connectors, we call them. So it's actually one unit on each joint that then has the extrusions put into it and riveted and glued in, that in place. So what are these modular connectors and how are they built? So again, it's using 1 8 inch aluminum plates and we can form these up and they will need to be welded together, but once they're welded together, we can then heat treat just a smaller unit and we can actually weld these to a specific standard. And these, these units are pretty small that can be shipped worldwide and used to build that kind of IKEA snap together car concept. So we can take that same concept of using these modular connectors and apply it to the idea of a door, a door chassis as well. And you can see similar design here to what we saw before, but it's using much less parts and using these modular connectors that by having them uh, welded and enclosed as a unit, it actually increases strength significantly rather than just having individual plates. So each one becomes its own structural unit that's cross-braced and, and quite strong. You can see here they've taken the ones that are used on the back of the, the chassis and then applied them to the doors to build a really, really strong door as well. So um, that's kind of the modular design of it is that once you put them here, you can actually use them in other parts of the vehicle. If you want to change the design of the vehicle, for instance, just change the dimensions uh, upward and make a, a deeper vehicle, for instance, we can easily do that by just increasing the, the length of these extensions and it just keeps the chassis design in a modular sort of way for the future as we come up with new uh, concepts. And then here's an exploded view of that same chassis, so just kind of looking at all the parts and pieces. And you can see this exploded view is much fewer pieces, which makes construction much simpler um, and just a, an easier way to, to kind of snap this whole thing together. Um, fewer man hours to put together, uh, less chance of having a mistake or a part missing because they kind of all have to be there in order for the thing to work. And you can also see uh, these darker U-shapes. So these are quarter inch aluminum plating that's actually used to stiffen this door area too. And there's three of those sandwiched in here. Um, it just increases the strength of that chassis in the door area. So here is kind of the magic and the secret of this whole thing. This is what can make this thing actually doable. This is a 4 inch by 4 inch by 8 inch aluminum block that's then been uh, drilled out with a, a 5 hole pattern 
uh, side by side on each of the sides of this block. And then this pattern is actually, the, each hole is actually threaded with a coarse, uh, coarse threading. So you can actually um, use it as a jig. It's a modular jig. So in addition to the connectors being modular, the jigs themselves are modular. And you can look and see how these are being used. So if you go over, this is the, the rear uh, connector. And here's the different three different parts that are used to build this type of connector. So there's uh, three different plates. They're uh, bended in a break. And then they can actually, those three can actually be weld together. So by bending in a break, it actually makes fewer parts to weld together and just increases the strength of those parts as well. So here's the modular jig. I actually use two of these bricks just stacked on top of each other. And then if we screw in these plates into those holes, it actually kind of creates a self-jigging uh, unit that then can be welded up. And because these aluminum blocks are solid, they actually create a heat sink that makes it easier to weld them together. So it actually takes some of the heat away from that joint and just makes the, the welding process much simpler. By screwing all the plates in, you know that they're exactly lined up and they don't distort during the welding process. And so then when you uh, unbolt it, pull those bricks out, we actually have uh, the unit that's dimensionally correct that can be used as a modular connector. Then here's the different uh, plates that are used for this particular um, connector. And you can see these are you know, very specific shapes, specific drill patterns. These can be created on CNC. Since this is 1 8 inch aluminum, we could possibly even create it with our current uh, 4 foot by 8 foot CNC machine that's in our Linwood shop. And actually just drill out and, and cut all these pieces ourselves. So let's go to our next connector. This is the, the three-way connector that goes in the middle of the car, and here's the different uh, plates that are used to build it. And then here is the jig configuration, so there's actually four different bricks that are stacked together. And this is the clip. looks like this is what the uh, jig looks like when it actually has the plates uh, bolted to it, and then it can be welded up. And then here's the different parts and pieces to build that one. So this next piece, this is actually the same connector, but the difference is that right here at this joint, there's not a, a 45 degree connecting it. This is because this is the top of the chassis where the uh, engine module and the interior module needs to slide down past this area. Um, and the rivets that are used on this interior where the, the module has to slide past, the rivet heads can't actually stick out or extend out. They need to be flush. And so there's actually uh, recessed rivets that so if this this hole is actually flared out with a, a larger drill bit the rivets can actually be flush mounted uh, to this plate so we can actually slide that module in we still lose a little uh, like an eighth of an inch uh, from the chassis because of this uh, connectors in there but it's pretty dimensionally close to the, the sort of uh, modules we have now we don't have to change the design of them just the dimensions need to be slightly tweaked to fit this new uh, connector in place. And then here's the different parts and pieces. You can see that just the only difference is that we have this <laughs> we have this T plate here at the bottom. And then this is the jig configuration. And this is it mounted up in that current jig. And the different parts and plates used to put it together. Uh, this is the corner brace. The corner brace, here's the different parts and pieces. It's an L shape um, with the different plates that go in place. Here's the jig configuration. And here it is with the plates in place around the jig. So just that corner plates are bolted on there and welded up. And the different parts that need to be CNC'd out. And then uh, this is the same configuration except that it actually has this plate that creates a 45 here. So this is the bottom connector of the chassis. The other one was the top connector. It goes, jig configuration is the same, and the way it welds up is the same, and it just has this 45 there. And there's all the different plates and pieces in place. And this last one is actually, this goes around the door. So if we did the door uh, chassis design, we'd need this connector also. And you can see it has a hole here to actually hold a pin or whatever it is that we use as a latching mechanism. That could be an inter interlocking mechanism would be the best option. I'm just using a pin here as kind of a placeholder that whatever we're using uh, would be placed there. And there's 
the pen you can see and the different parts that need to be welded together. This is the jig configuration and then it just bolts up and welds like that. And here are the last plates. So that is all of uh, all of the connections uh, that we have, the modular connections and the ideas behind them. Um, the 4x4 four four inch uh, block that we need we can actually purchase those in six foot length, so it's a four inch by four inch uh, by six foot length bar that can be purchased just over five hundred dollars that can be cut into eight different bricks. Um, we can even get a one and a quarter by one and a quarter by six foot uh, length uh, rods as, or bar stock as well to create uh, similar connectors for the interior and engine modules, which I haven't mocked those up yet, but it would be along the same design principles as what I've just shown. So it can also create just a simpler uh, simpler connectors for those modules as well. And uh, as far as heat treating, I've looked into that some as well, and with heat treating we can use uh, pottery ovens, so actually using a ceramic, pottery ceramic kilns. And I found one that's a, a, four, a four foot square one that's actually down in Oregon that's selling for $100, they'll deliver to Seattle for $400, so for $500 we could have a pottery kiln for $50, we can put in our own electronics. There's just a pretty standard way of changing electronics, so we can set it for whatever temperature we want to, and actually do our own heat treating of these uh, connector modules. So we can uh, cut, bend, weld all the plates to create the interior modules connectors in, in, in house. Then we can reheat treat them to T6 hardness. So after we welded them and after we've bent them, we can actually bring them back to T6 hardness. So then our whole car becomes uh, T6 uh, certified at both the connector level, the extrusions, everything's riveted together so we maintain our strength throughout. It also has the 45 degree uh, triangulation in it as well. And I think we get, get a lot of benefit out of taking this approach. Um, again, this is just the initial idea I'm throwing out there to the team. Um, I'm sure as people take a look at this, have new ideas, we can iterate this idea even better, but I think the 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 core concept is is pretty well defined right now. And just as a team, we can actually discuss it and uh, improve upon it further, which I'm sure is always possible to do. So, um, looking forward to hearing your feedback on this and uh, submitting this to Wikispeed's YouTube channel. If you have questions, you can always contact me at info@wikispeed.com. So thank you very much for your time.